Okay, in section 6.4, we're going to talk about what's called sampling distributions. So a sampling distribution of a statistic is when we look at the distribution, so the shape of all values of the statistic, when all possible samples of whatever size, size n, so we'll, we'll pick some size and we'll take all samples of that size, are taken from the population. So what this means is that you have some population with data values, and we pick some value, say n is 5. Then we would take all samples of size 5 that we could, okay, and we look at those samples, and we would look at the shape of information we get from the samples. So the reason that we use sampling distributions is because they're easier to get than a census, right? A census, if we wanted to ask, you know, find information about everything in a population, it would be very difficult to get. Um, and for certain statistics, these values doing this sample over and over and over gives us a very good um, target or a very good estimator for the entire population. So the things where these do work, where sampling distributions are helpful, are the mean the variance, and if we're talking about a proportion of something. Now, there are some things that do not target the whole population, meaning it wouldn't be useful. And those things would be, um, would include the median, the range, and standard deviation. Okay, now, with any sampling distribution, we always sample with a replacement so that we have independent samples. So that's just a little thing to keep in mind. So you can have the same thing show up in your sample more than once. So we're going to do um, sampling distributions on small things that we can actually do by hand. Um, of course, you'd have much bigger things uh, if you're doing it in real life, and you'd have a computer help you come up with all the samples. So example one says, here are the heights of four blue spruce trees to the nearest foot. So we have four trees. One is 13 feet tall, one is 16 feet tall, 12 feet tall, and 11 feet tall. So assume that samples of size two, so we're going to pick two trees, are randomly selected with replacement. So once you pick a tree, you could pick it again. Okay. So, the first thing we want to do is list the 16 different possible samples and find the mean of each of those samples. So, we're going to have our samples and the, the mean. So, for example, um, the first tree we could pick out would be the 13-foot one. Okay, we put it back in, we could get that 13-foot one again. Okay, now the mean, we're taking 13 plus 13 divided by 2. Is 13. Okay, the next sample, well, we could pick that 13 foot tree, and then the next tree we could pick would be the 16 foot tree. Okay, and if we took the average between 13 and 16, we get 14.5. Next, we could get the 13 foot tree and the 12 foot tree. And there, the average would be 12.5. Okay, the next sample, we could take the 13-foot tree and the 11-foot tree. Okay, and the mean there is 12. Okay, then we can think about what happens if we pick the 16-foot tree first. Well, we could have 16 and 13. The mean would be 14.5. We could pick the 16-foot tree twice. The mean is 16. Okay, um... Then we could pick 16 and 12, where the average is 14. Or we could do 16 and 11, where the average is 13.5. Okay, we can continue in this way. So I'm going to pause this real quick and write out the rest of the samples and their means. Okay, so here you can see the eight other samples. So we went 12, we could get each of them, and 11 with each of the other trees and their means.
Okay, so here when you're taking the mean of two values, remember you're just adding them and dividing by two. Now, we want to look at kind of um, the means that are unique, meaning we don't want to repeat the means. And we want to find, it says, identify the probability of each sample, then describe the sampling distributions of the sample means. So we're going to look at the sample means, the ones that we got without repeating. So the lowest mean we got was 11. The next lowest one we got was 11.5. Then we had 12 and 12.5. 12 we had 13 and 13.5, 14, 14.5, and 16. Now we want to look, what's the probability of getting that mean from these samples? So we have a total of 16 samples. So each of our um, denominators is going to be 16. So we say, well, how many of them had a mean of 11? Well, that was only the very last one. So that probability would be 1 out of 16. Then we would say, well, how many of them had a mean of 11.5? And that was the one with 12 and 11 and 11 and 12. So that's 2 out of 16, which we could reduce, but we don't need to right now. Then we look at 12. How many of them had 12? Well, that was three of them, so three out of 16. 12.5, we had two out of 16. 13, there was only one of them, so one out of 16. 13.5, there was two. 14, there was two. 14.5, there was two. And 16, there was just one. Okay, so that... This is actually our probability distribution. We have all the means that can happen from samples of size 2, and their probability of that happening if you have a sample of size 2. Now, we want to find the mean of this sampling distribution. So remember, we did this back in Chapter 5. And to do this, we put the means in L1 and the probabilities in L2. And then we choose one bar stats. L1 comma L2. And here it'll give you a mean of exactly 13. Um, and remember you can also use the formula of multiplying the X bar times the probabilities and adding them all up. Now this says is the mean of the sampling distribution, that's what we just found 13, equal to the mean of the population. So we need to find the mean of the population. And we can do that here because um, we only have four values. So remember our population, those four trees, find the mean. We have a 13, 16, 12, and 11. So we're going to add those all up and divide by 4, and we get 13. So that's the mean of the population, and the mean of the sampling distribution, which is what we did from the table, that was also 13. So are they the same? the question asks and so obviously the answer is yes okay and that's what we want to see the whole point is that now if it, this you know normally you know if we just had four trees we can obviously easily find the mean but what if we had four thousand trees okay and now a sample size two would be good but we could easily go out and um, sample ten of those trees and then we take another sample of ten and we do this over and over and if you do it enough um, and find the means of each of the samples and then find the average of your probability distribution, you can estimate the mean of the population. So now we're going to do it slightly differently. We're going to talk about proportions. Okay, so proportions is how many of, you know, um, is something happening. So example two says, here are the number of students in four different sections of statistics. So we have four different classes. One has 22 students, one has 15 students, one has 28 students, and one has 30 students. It says, assume that samples of size 2 are randomly selected with replacement from this population of four values. Okay, so then we make a probability distribution. So this is exactly what we did. So the first part is exactly what we did, except for instead of a mean, we want to find the proportion of sections with more than 25 students. Now, with only two samples, there's either going to be zero with more than 25 
one with more than 25 or two. So our only possibilities for proportions here for this specific example will be 0, 0.5 or 1. So we're going to list our samples. Okay, and again it's replacement. And then we're also going to find the proportion of more than 25. So we could do 22 and 22. Now, how many of those sections have more than 25? Well, zero. 22 and 15, again, zero. 22 and 28, well, there it's one out of two, so 0. 0.5. 22 and 30, again, 30 gives us one that's more than 25, so 0. 0.5. Okay, now we're going to keep doing the same thing with 15 first and then the 28 first and 30. So I'm going to pause and write out the 16 samples and their proportion. Okay, so here are the 16 different samples and the proportion of each of those samples that has more than 25 students. So now it says identify the probability of each sample and describe the sampling distribution. So we're going to have our proportions, which we normally represent by p hat, and we'll have the probability of that p hat. So here, the only proportions we got were 0, 0.5, and 1. And again, there are 16 samples here, so we're going to take find the probability we'll count how many of them had that proportion out of 16. So if we count for 0, there were 4 of them out of 16 that had that proportion. For 0.5, if we count, there are 8 out of 16. And for 1, again, we had 4 out of 16. If you wanted to reduce those fractions, you really could but you don't have to. Okay, so now the last part says find the mean of the sampling distribution. So again, you're going to put the p hats in L1 and the probabilities of p hats in L2 and do the one var stats L1 comma L2. So if we find the average, we get of this distribution, we get 0.5. Now it says, does the mean of the sample proportions, which is 0.5, equal the proportion of sections with more than 25 students? Now, of those four we started with, exactly two or one half had more than 25 students. So again, yes, the sampling distribution, the mean worked out to be exactly the same as our original proportion. So these two examples were to show you that for means and proportions, the sampling distributions target or give you the um, value of the entire population.